Hello, I'm Gianni, and I'm a very lucky man because I have four children. Yes, okay, that can be challenging sometimes. I give you that. But all the people sitting here today who have a daughter or a son know how enriching it is to have a child. It opens up new worlds of thought, of reasoning, of expression. And I'm not talking about the magnificent catch-up painting on your walls when you come back home at night. I haven't figured that one out yet. But I'm talking about their approach to everything. See, some time ago, I gave a remote-controlled car to my daughter, and she was really happy playing with it, until that broke irreversibly, falling from the balcony, also known as gravity experiments. That car for me was for me now classified as waste, since nothing reasonable could have been done to put back all those pieces together. Yet she asked me for it, ever so eager to have all those pieces. So I resembled everything and, and gave it to her. And off she went with her treasure to her room, running, smiling. So I followed and spied on her. And what I saw was very interesting. I saw how she took apart every single component of that car and transformed everything, it, down to the smallest stickers and even the rubber joints. And she transformed everything into new decorative elements, robots, spaceships, and even secret agent devices. Now, what I saw as waste, she saw as valuable raw elements. And that made me think, Today, we produce 2.12 billion tons of waste every year. That is the equivalent of 4,033 tons of waste every minute. It's, it's the size of 13 fully loaded Boeing 747s of trash, filling up our, our, our landfills and spilling into rivers and oceans, intoxicating nature the air, the soil, the water, and all living life. Now, a very small, very, very small percentage of it is truly recycled in an efficient and environmentally friendly way. But what happens to all the rest of the mountains of unrecycled and unrecyclable plastic? What if we could get out of that very pl plastic waste the valuable raw elements, such as the very elements they're made of, and in this case, is, uh, hydrocarbons, which is essentially hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Now, most of you know that hydrogen and oxygen react together, releasing enormous amounts of energy, okay? And, re and giving out pure water as the only byproduct, which means this is the greenest form of energy possible. Okay? In fact, it is so powerful, hydrogen, that it releases three times more energy than petrol, diesel, or even kerosene. And the remaining carbon? Well, we can make pencils for our kids, or sustainable diamonds for our ladies. So, you see, in the world, there are vast wild areas that are occupied by this disposed garbage waste which in several different ways intoxicate all life forms and disrupt the natural ecosystem, including the uh, conversion, absorption and conversion of carbon dioxide from the air. See, and some of these places are in our oceans and they're so wide, so vast, that they're known as plastic continents. You see, these plastic continents are so vast that if you were to build a road crossing from one side to the other, it would take a car several days to fully cross it. And there are five of them, growing even bigger every year. Now, attempts to tackle them, there have been many and many, but from gathering the plastic um, actively to gathering the plastic passively, sailing towards it, um, collecting it, shipping it back to land to further treat it. But all these attempts have, result, have resulted as extremely impractical and ridiculously 
ridiculously expensive. But what if we could use that plastic to power the collection and transformation process, transforming any plastic continent into a huge green energy resource? Thank you. That's exactly it. Now, the system to convert this plastic waste into energy exists, and it's called gasification or chemical electrolysis. Now, the system was invented in the early 19th century. It's nothing new, but it's been perfected and optimized ever since. And today, we can find it in several different industries, from Copenhagen's uh, municipal waste management to NASA, latest mission to Mars, where the Little Discovery rover was able to produce oxygen from the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere. See, the key point of this uh, gasification system is that it superheats materials, in this case plastic, at temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius, which is about 1,800 Fahrenheit, without combustion, thus breaking down the large molecular structures into smaller subunits, all the way down to their elemental forms, like hydrogen. And we can use that to create energy. And this makes crazy projects like cleaning up ocean garbage patches possible with boats equipped with this gasification system, able to element themselves with the green energy produced on site by the very garbage they collect. In other words, we could, re we could, um, we could reduce by 90% the greatest garbage patch in just five years with two boats, converting 50 tons per day of trash into green energy, alimenting the whole system. This means energy autonomy. Once running, it fuels itself. Now, Imagine this very vast area that is constantly and currently killing all wildlife, poisoning our waters, and blocking phytoplankton from absorbing natural absorption and conversion into oxygen of the carbon dioxide of the air. Okay? Become the very green fuel for its own elimination in a circular flow of energy. And by the way, did you know the phytoplankton absorbs four times more carbon dioxide than that per square meter than does the Amazon rainforest. But if it's covered by plastic, it cannot do this. Okay? So just imagine that eliminating the greatest garbage patch would be equivalent in size of revitalizing, regenerating the entire Amazon rainforest. Okay? That is like replanting 400 billion trees, and I'm not talking about the small trees that everybody replants, the full-size trees. Okay, so if you want to drastically reduce carbon dioxide globally, in addition to protecting our forest, let's clean our oceans. And we can do that. The solution exists. We just need to turn the key. To make you understand this concept of waste to energy, I brought something special from Paris. Aha! So this is plastic waste. 10 kilos of this plastic waste, any plastic waste, not just the French ones. 10 kilos of this plastic waste we, um, we can extract 3.4 kilos of hydrogen, which has got the energy equivalent of 12.6 liters of petrol, or 2.7 gallons of gas. In other words, with uh, the hydrogen extracted from a bag of 10 kilos, I could run a hydrogen car from New York City to Washington, D.C., and back, or from Paris to Münster, here. I could have come by car 
or should I say, by garbage. But that's not all. You see, from hydrocarbons, we can also tune the system to collect ethylene, which is the very building block for all kind of production, enabling us to make more products on a truly recyclable way. So just get a bigger picture. Imagine taking those huge landfills of unrecycled and recyclable plastic, converting everything into hydro hydrocarbons, and decide whether to use them for energy production or to make new products. And once the products are used, retransform them again in hydrocarbons, and again and again, reducing and eventually eliminating the need to extract new raw materials. In fact, we may find in waste. Sorry, that I think would be something to think about because this would be a truly form of sustainable production. But what we may find in waste is that we can recuperate all kind of valuable raw elements that we might ever need for all kind of applications. You see, the system to extract valuable raw elements from plastic can also be applied to all kinds of waste, including that is called as that is labeled as dangerous or hazardous, where the more reactive components are broken down into more inert or easier to handle subunits, and these in turn can be used for other applications, other systems. So here is a call to all the green electric car manufacturers. Why don't you take back your cars after usage so that you can effectively and functionally recuperate all the materials, including the rare earth minerals that make up the batteries, so that these in turn can be used to make the new generation vehicles? That would not only save a lot of money, a lot of money, but it would save from environmental degradation, from all the mining of those rare earth minerals, as well as the disposal of the toxic batteries. In fact, this manufacturing system or model could be applied to all kinds of industries, not just electric cars or smartphones or soda drinks. Going back to the remote control car comparison, this would mean that with all those bits and pieces, I could make new games and toys for years and years even generations. So now you understand what I mean that I say what I what I say what I mean when I say that kids are enriching. Because I just potentially saved myself thousands and thousands of euros from years worth of expensive toys. We should all start learning from our children and see the valuable raw elements in all that we consider as waste. And instead of looking up into space, searching for new um, resources, let's just turn around and look how much, what an infinite reusable resources we have already here on our planet. And this is for generations and generations. Considering our current critical environmental situation that we are all concerned, we're living in an exciting time because the positive actions today will make all the difference. There's no time to waste. So let's start now and act. And by the way, did you know that today is World Cleanup Day? So I guess, I guess that's a sign. Thank you. <laughs>